Hello folks, welcome back for I am the one and the only I am a hobo Tom. And let's see, let's start off first with what happened over the weekend. Oh, autoplay now. Who cares about autoplay? See here, so I couldn't, on Saturday, I couldn't catch like half of Triple Mania Regia. I don't know how important that is. Normally there are big shows in August. And I do a whole thing. What are you? She's just destroying my computer stuff. No, I need that. No. Yeah, I'll have that up. So, out of the matches I saw, I can't believe I got... I, I knew Psycho Clown and his team was going to win. Dragon Lee and Drillistico, I was impressed. Uh, William Max showed up to team up with Laredo Kid. Yeah, that wasn't happening. I figured Lucha Brothers would beat FTR, but they didn't. That was weird. But, Iho Del Vikingo is now the mega champion, as I so rightfully predicted. Um, the other few matches, I don't know what happened with Chessman and hit Murder Clown and Dave the Clown. I don't know what happened with Ponder Del Norte, and there was some like women's match there. I don't think. I should see if I can catch that on YouTube. Mainly just to see if there was some wardrobe issue. But yeah, other than that though, you know what? I'll give myself, I did pretty good for knowing absolutely nothing about AAA. I'll say I was a 50-50 booker. And then let's see here for War Games. War Games. Because I am Johnny Ace. The man with the deepest voice in wrestling. And I've cost so many wrestlers their career. <laughs> Guess what, Johnny Gargano? You're out of here too, buddy boy. And yet, Kyle Riley. <laughs> See ya. Your voice isn't crappy enough. And yeah, I have a hot wife and two hot daughter in laws. Yeah. And some idiot son in law in AEW for some reason. But yeah, um, for War Games, I'll tell you what, I was in the head of Triple H. Because, man, I guessed all but the main event right, and that was a toss-up there. Only because I had Team Gonzalez defeating Team Kai, Roderick Strong winning Imperium. retaining their belts, and, of course, Duke Hudson got his head shaved. Um, I just figured, you know what, it was a toss-up between old school and new school. Once I saw Grice and Walla, the Aussie was there, I'm like... <laughs> This is an easy call. Grayson Waller's eating the pin. No, Tommaso Ciampa ate the pin to Rex Steiner. I refuse to call him Braun Breaker. That's ridiculous. Again, that put me in the head of one Paul Levesque. It proves to me I know what I'm guessing at. I also have some thank yous. Uh, Ramos Avendano. Muerte. You, sir, you always win twice without six count.
fighter is a sloppy fighter. Joey goes for some air. Not enough. Joey goes for some air. I wonder if you guys can hear that, but someone's dog's being extra yippy. And if I keep on turning my head, it's because I have uh, garlic cheese bread cooking in the oven. And then Yang He Yoon, you know what you're doing because you're a master of the air guitar. Yep, so there we go. I actually got stuff done. I also posted my video, did a video game review, which I rarely do. Yeah, now let's talk to AEW. Um, Hell came to AEW. <laughs> no, I thought this was Winter is Coming. I don't think, oh, I won't be able to watch Winter is Coming, because that's next week. I have off that day. I'll see what I can do Tuesday. So... I'll get to that at the end of the video. If you see like me running, it's because I smell smoke, and that means something's overcooked, which is not good. So it starts off, CM Punk comes out, cuts a promo against NJF. Mention Roddy Roddy Piper's movie, Hell Comes to Frogtown. I don't care what else he said, he said that. That was hilarious. And then we had our 12 man Diamond Battle Royale. Um, there are 12 people in it. I. I missed a few. Um, so let me give you the eliminations that were not much really happened. It was Lee Moriarty got out, Matt Hardy got out, then it was Hobbs, Powerhouse Hobbs, Leo Rush, Lee Johnson, Wardlow, some jobber guy, Tony Starks, and I'm missing one. I honestly forget who I'm missing. Because the way their Battle Royal format Oh, let's see here. So, uh, the way their battle royal is, is that they do it until there's only two people left. Because they, because just like the Bullet Club, I'll have to do that. They're too sweet. So, um, some of the highlights of this match. It was kind of just a big schmoz. Uh, uh, MJF kind of like spent most of the match. He kind of went through the bottom rope. Or the middle and top rope. He did not go over the top ever. But he just kind of like hung out in the corner. Which I guess is what smart heels do. Uh, the real kind of feature was Wardlow versus Hobbs. That was kind of that was kind of fun looking. Oh, Osprey. That was four years ago though. Um, to the move better than the innovator. Yeah, let's see. Here. Wait, what was I? What was I talking about? Yeah, Hobbs versus Wardlow was kind of the mainstay, and that was like, for the most part, the focus of this. So that was actually pretty cool. Uh, that was like the big thing. No, we'll save that. We'll save you. <laughs> we'll tease for for what's coming up soon. 
Um, then it was Dante. Oh, Dante Martin. That's right. Eliminates Starks. I keep on this Ricky Starks. I keep on wanting to say Tony Starks. So to find out, it's going to be Dante Martin versus MJF at Winter is Coming. That should be interesting. Um, Ricky Starks came in. He, he beat down Dante Martin for tossing him up. Dante Martin might have gotten the heart out there by Team Taz. MJF teases like he's going to come in. This is his hometown. Yeah, there was an MJF promo. It was okay. Uh, CM Punk came out. Who was that? Made the save. Oh, I don't know if you heard that. was like some dog barking. Who knows? Um, pretty much the way Battle Royals go, you knew, kind of knew for sure MJF was going to win. I don't know. Not that impressive. Ham sandwich of a match. And I think that bread's going to get done just in time for me to go to the gym so it can cool off, which is good. Because I have no bread to eat along with my macaroni and cheese tonight and beer. Because it is Thursday. Then we had the then we had an eight man tag team. It was the Acclaim and 2.0 taking on the Varsity Blondes and Dress Express. I don't I honestly just just want to see the cheerleaders cooch. I I, I really don't care about anything else in this match. Um, it was a decent match. It was a good match though. A classic wrestling start. Good rope running by both teams. Acclaim they couldn't get their, their they couldn't figure it out as a tag team. So there's no double teams there. Uh, Two point eight came in. They couldn't figure it out either. Uh, Pillman was too strong, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, Jungle Boy was too strong for both those teams. Again, then Jungle Boy just single-handedly, he doesn't need a tag team, he just takes out everyone. Then we start doing flies outside the ring, and flies and dives, Pillman, Brian Pillman, who's looking a lot more like his dad day by day. Uh, was flying outside the ring, Griff Garrison did the same, they take out everyone. Uh, the Varsity Blondes. Again, smart tag team wrestling. Quick tags in and out. Except for then, Brian Pullman went up in the wrong corner and gets beat up. Now the heels finally got on the same page. And started to work as a team. Uh, Pullman was just getting beat up. Taz got a little too excited. Tony said, calm down. And you know it was... It wasn't a pro, it wasn't a program spot because he's because Tony you could almost see Tony, Come, relax, relax. Yeah, Taz is getting excited. Taz, Taz is a big. Taz probably should be excited because uh, we're gonna see Hook wrestle next week. His son. So I'll we'll see how far the apple fall from fall falls from the tree, as they say. Again, yeah, that was just funny. Then, yeah, Luchasaurus got the hot tag, hot tag. takes out everyone. Out everyone. Ding, ding, ding. Arr, arr. Arr. The klaxon goes off, like one Simon Miller says. And it's a spot fest. Pillman hit like a fisherman something. That, like a fisherman, fisherman neck breaker or something like that. That was awesome, though. Um, eventually... Oh yeah, Garcia gets in the top rope, trying to distract him. Eddie Kingston goes, comes in. Garcia goes up. Garcia goes down. Kingston, I don't know. There's, no one knows where he's going. Then they fight off. Varsity Blondes and Jurassic Express win. Um, I think one of the two point guys got caught in the snare trap, tap, forced to tap out. I'm okay with that win. You know, solid. Ooh, that's, that is smelling good. Cheeseburger match. Kingston's going in the back. There's a brawl. And then there's a little FTR promo. And then all of a sudden, wait for it. Oh no. We revert back to New Japan. Where we have the Bullet Club. Oh, oh wait, wrong sleeve. Bullet Club. They're too sweet for life. Taking on Chaos. Chaos. 
But where's Yano? Where's... Oh, you can't have chaos without Yano. Man, what's up with that? Um, it was of the Bullet Club. It was the Bucks of Youth. The Young Bucks. Taking on Rocky Romero. Why did I think he was in Rapongi 2K? And... The Kentucky Gentleman? Chuck Taylor? That's a terrible thing. Boo! I'm Rocky Romero. He has some good judo stuff. He learned something over there in the dojo in Japan. Uh, good chain wrestling between Romero and Nick Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> the Young Bucks. Amazing teamwork. No one does teamwork better really than the Young Bucks. Again, brother, brothers always do that. It's so much better. Uh, Matt. A flipping Young Buck. Uh, back rake. That probably feels good though. I want Charlotte Flair to rake my back. Ooh. But yeah. Uh, enough about that nonsense. I didn't even take a Rio back rake, I think. At this point of my life. Let's see here. Um, what else is there? Oh, Chuck T. A DDT flatline liner combo. I can see that as, as a two on one on two move. Not not that double hurricane. That's just awful looking. Uh, and, he, and he interrupts a super kick. There was no super kick party. Then out of cold, baby. Of the super click starts to get involved. Orange Cassidy get, is there. Sweet chin music. Adam Cole's like, what the hell is this dork doing to me? Uh, <laughs> the line of the night. Tony says, Adam Cole. Boom. Baby needs to wash his greasy hair. Oh my. Yeah. That was funny. Uh, the Young Bucks. And they hit a pair of sentons. That's pretty good. The forever clotheslines by Rocky Romero. Ro Romero hit a standing slice of bread. That's impressive. There was no locomotion. Um, going for the third one. Uh, Taylor countered that into a DDT. Oh, then they teased the Meltzer driver. But yeah, there was that heel and miscue where uh, he sprayed that cold stuff in the wrong person's face. There was no Melcher driver, but then, because it is the Bucks of Youth, there was the Melcher driver. Oh, my notes. There we go. There was the Melcher driver. Young Bucks win. Actually, fairly entertaining match. Cheeseburger match. Then there was the classic. Bullet Club beatdown, because Bullet Club's too sweet for life. The classic Bullet Club beatdown of chaos. Oh wow, that took that whole theme? That was impressive. I did something right, I timed something right for a change. Um, and then, <laughs> oh, Trent Breda shows up with his mom driving the minivan there. That was hilarious. They were going to do the um, Panama Sunrise on Orange Cassidy. That was good to see. Uh, then Seer. So after that, Ruby Soho confronts the Bunny and Penelope Ford. I honestly forgot Penelope Ford was still wrestling. She gets saved by Ty Conti and Anna Jay. Yeah, they're going to have like a six-woman tag match. Six-woman orgy. I don't know what they're doing. Uh, Tony and Sammy Guevara interview. Cody Rhodes interrupts. Then there's Scorpio Sky and Ethan All Ego. Ethan Page. The pop. That's it for that. Last page of notes, I promise. Then in the obligatory women's match. Um, is Jamie Hayter versus Riho. I kind of like the way the story went and the fact that they were having Riho's quickness versus Jamie Hayter's strength and power. I'll tell you what, there was a visible size difference too. Like when Jamie Hayter had Riho 
Riho in a chin lock. Just her upper body looks so much more massive and longer than all of Riho's frame. Pretty weird. Um, again, the story was Riho's too quick, uh, but whenever Hater could get a hold of Riho, that would be the end of that. That was a rag doll of a backbreaker. That was great. Rio hit the 619. Then I got Bashi, though. Um, Rio, like, barely dived. I, from the top. I think it was from the top. I mean, at least it, was, at least it wasn't the Brie Bella running, like, head dive. It was just short. And she should be able to get some air because she's not. she doesn't have that heavy of a frame. And I'm like, jeez, Rio's tiny. It was literally Jamie Hader just picked her up right off the ground. And Jamie Hader's ass is amazing. And then she broke her G-string. I like that. Only thing this match is good for, um, I re hit the Code Red, or what, or also known as a Lucha Destroyer. And it got kind of pretty stiff. That was a stiff coup de gras, the double song from the top rope. That, like, hit it's flat on her t on on. Jamie ate her stomach, man. But again, Riho's so light, it probably doesn't matter. Like, Rio walked on my back, it wouldn't do a thing. And then it was that... Oh, that, that, that the, can, the ring post corner. Jamie Hater bent over. Yeah. Yeah. You just... Had the vagina shot. Then there was a super crucif crucifix palm. Again, <laughs> Jamie Hater. It was amazing, but somehow, Riho won with like a roll up. So, yeah, so she gets to face Dr. Britt Baker DND. Jeez, that's not going to be fun. You know what? Man, this, can this match was a can of soup. One, for its predictability. Two, because of its boshiness. Then we get to the main event. This was actually pretty fun. Um, although that last spot. Ooh, that gotcha pile driver. I think John Silver got something wrong. Seriously. If not neck. It was Brian Danielson versus John Silver. Uh, man, John Silver's short. It's getting a little pudgy, too. He used to be, like, Jack, but now he's like, getting, he's getting to be short pudge ball. Uh, big running shoulder tackle. That was great. <laughs> Taz, another great line. Oh, the commentators are so good. Taz called Silver Wee Man. That's hilarious. See, I actually did look that small. Uh, they tried the Greco-Roman test of strength into the yes kicks. The running knee to the back of the head. More yes kicks. John Silver. Um, put the heel hook on. He would get kicked. He's like, ah, yeah, yeah. Puts the heel hook. That was pretty good. Johnny, he has some, John Silver has some good moves. He just looks short. And again, with other short wrestlers, he looks like normal height. With other shorter or even skinny wrestlers. Like, John Silver looks big muscle-wise compared to Adam Cole, baby. But compared to, like, Brian Danielson, he just looks short. Again, some good German suplexes. They were good. Great combos by John Silver. However, Brian Danielson put him in the gosh pile driver. I did like an, like a real anaconda choke. I don't know what it was. It looked like an anaconda. Maybe Ezekiel, Ezekiel choke. Because um, John Silver was like flat out though. He's like, uh oh, this isn't good. I'll just do this and make it look like something. As he was out, the do the, both doctors were there. Um, Brian Nelson, you know what? I have yet to kick his teeth. I kicked his teeth in. I I kicked um, Tens. I kicked Uno's head in. I kicked the teeth out of Colt Cabana. I kicked the head in. Well, he didn't kick the head in. He broke. He tore the, supposedly tore the MCL of five. And now he wants to stomp John Silver's head in. And he gets stopped by Adam Page. But wait a second. I thought there was like a no touch clause. This match overall, 
cheeseburger match. Actually, a fairly entertaining show. They had me when CM Punk said, Hell comes to Frogtown. So yeah, that was AEW. Watching it on TV actually seemed to be better than watching it on the computer. I don't know why. A couple other things about this week. Later tonight. Yes, because I'm, be, I'm going to be going to the gym soon. Once I get the bread out of the oven, that should be done. Don't want it to burn. Um, this video should be up before I do my impact review. Or it might be working. They do my impact review. So yeah, it's going to be touch and go. We'll see what happens there. Because I do have to process and edit a few things. Um, that'll be tonight. Later tonight. I'm going to do my Ring of Honor final battle. Because I have a lot to do. Ooh, I have to, yeah. Final battle's coming on. So I do have a lot to do for that. And you might see a little bit of the hobo, what goes on here in the hobo studio. And I'll have to do that tomorrow too. So yeah, that's not too bad. Uh, Friday is going to be a double show. It'll be SmackDown first. Both will be live. Then I'll do the AEW Rampage because that's pretty quick. Saturday then. It's going to be Ring of Honor. I'm going to try and do a little picture-in-picture -picture stuff. As far as next week goes, I don't know. I might, on Monday, instead of doing Raw, I might do a Raw review. I don't know. I have to figure out what I'm doing that night because I do have to work that night. If not, it might be a standalone cooking show for Final Battle. I don't know. We'll see. Because I'm going to make myself a nice barbecue chicken chicken sausage pizza with onions. I'll show you guys how I actually do that stuff. It's been a while since I made a cooking with a hobo video. It's about time I show you something good. Other than that, and then I think it's going to be for the most part a normal week. Oh, look. Yeah, OP except for Saturday. And the next week's Christmas. And then we'll have, of course, uh, the Delete the Deletemus Tournament, the 